the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of the world. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladden us year by year as we wait in hope for our redemption, 
Grant that, just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you should be called my delight, and your land is found. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you, and as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Fellow Israelites, and you 
others who are God-fearing listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to offer 
offer incense on in the temple, in the Holy of Holies. That happened once a year, on the Day of Atonement. And if you've ever been to public school and you had to offer Yom Kippur, congratulations, you know what the Day of Atonement is. <laughs> right, so it was the Day of Atonement. And anyone who's been to public school, when is Yom Kippur? Hmm? End of September, very good. So he goes into the temple, end of September, nine months later, Elizabeth as John the Baptist, which puts us into the end of June. If my math is correct, good. Now Luke's Gospel tells us there are six months between John the Baptist's birthday and Jesus' birthday. And if we work six months from the end of June, where are we? The end of December. Man, it's almost like the Bible tells us when the day is. But we can go a little further. The church in Rome always celebrated Christmas on December 25th. And who was the first bishop of Rome? Peter. Peter. And who knew Jesus personally? Peter. And who probably would have had a good idea when Jesus' birthday was? Peter. And who could have asked Jesus' mother Mary after the ascension when the birthday of Jesus was? Peter. Very good. So we have two things. We have the witness of the scriptures. We have the personal testimony of the disciples. Lastly, in the 3rd century, St. Hippolytus of Rome brings up the date of Christmas. Hippolytus lives in Rome during the Roman Empire. And if you'll remember, Jesus was born during a census. And so he tells his fellow Romans, if you want to make sure that we get the date right, go down the block to the census records. And you will find that Jesus was born on December 25th. Constantine becomes emperor, the capital moves to Constantinople. St. John Chrysostom in the 5th century, the bishop of Constantinople, is living in the capital of the Roman Empire. And when the date gets disputed again, he tells everybody to go down the block and to look at the Roman census archives, and you can find when Jesus was born. The scriptures, the personal witness, and history. When was Jesus born? Good. Why are we here? It's Jesus' birthday, yes? yes? You're all with me? Yes. When you watch the History Channel and they bring up the stupid dates, you'll throw your shoes at it? <laughs> Hard man. It depends how big the TV is, right? But really, why are we here on December 25th? And I don't just mean the date. Why are we here on December 25th? Because you see, certain things present themselves as just demanding a response, right? If, if, if you're married, if you're a married man and your wife comes up to you and she goes, I found a paper clip, you don't really have to respond. If your wife comes up to you and she says, I found a million dollars in cash, you kind of have to respond. <laughs> it's a big claim. And the bigger the claim, the bigger the response has to be. And what is the church claiming about December 25th? Okay, that it's Jesus' birthday. Fair enough. It's claiming that Jesus is God. That Jesus is God. That he created everything. That he will come at the end of time to judge the living and the dead. That he raised people from the dead. That he healed the sick. That in his human nature, he died on a cross and brought himself back to life. And that he is at work in the church, through the sacraments, through our teachings, through our prayer, through our moral lives, in the things we do. When we talk about December 25th, we're not just talking about a matter of historical fact, but something that demands a response. And the bigger the claim, the bigger the response we need to give. And so I think when Christmas comes up, I'm always forced to consider my own life of faith. Because if what we're saying is true, if what the scriptures say is true, what the gospel that we heard tonight says, God is 
with us. That God took on a human nature. He was born in the little backwoods province of the Roman Empire. Came back from the dead and delivered us from sin and is still present in that tabernacle in every Catholic church. Then that is the biggest claim in human history. And so it demands the biggest response. And so when we talk about the lives of the saints, and as we look around, we can see Mary and Joseph on the sides who were there at the birth. And as we look around at those statues, you can see, uh, where are we there? Look at Teresa there, St. John the 23rd, St. Therese, St. Anthony, at Simon and Veronica, and the stations. As we look at the saints, it's people who realize this is something qualitatively different. This is a big claim that demands all that I am, demands all that I have, and that God will not abandon me in that. Because when he came, he didn't come, as he said in that first coming, to judge but to offer that mercy. And he came so that sinners may be saved. And if you need to find a sinner who needs to be saved, first off, the love. But second off, I advise a mirror. We all know we have those weak points. We all know we have those, those things we, we struggle with over and over, over and over again. We all know we have those things where I just haven't got it yet. So maybe this Christmas then, as I, as I look at my own response, I could just make a little stable of my heart. And the, the sheep will come in, and the little drummer boy might come in every now and again, and tear things up a bit. Right? And the magi will come with their promises of gold and of wealth, and the shepherds will come. All these things, but really, what's in my heart? What's the center of my heart? Because Christmas gives us that answer. Gives us that answer. The God of the universe, the God who made all things, whose footprints we see throughout creation, who's formed all things, sustained all things, who redeemed all things, he comes in a way so as to not frighten us. He comes as a little baby. He comes as someone I would, dare say, even want to go up to. And go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right? What's threatening about that? What's scary about that? A little baby? This is how God wants to enter in. This is the gentleness of God. The mercy of God and the tenderness of God. So why are we here on December 25th? This is a celebration of God's love. This is a celebration of God's mercy. That even in my, my weak points, even in my flaws, God calls out. Maybe the question, this day, this month, this season, this year, this lifetime, am I responding to that? Am I responding proportionately to the greatest claim in the history of the world? wrap up two things. First is, no doubt, there are people here who have been hurt by the church. And there's the Christmas and Easter crowd and all that. Right? If you have been hurt by the church, I am sorry. That was wrong. That's not what we're here for. And I'm sorry. And if you only make it Christmas and Easter, and you only make it sporadically, you are where you are. I didn't come up here to cast a game. But family is a good thing. I like families. And I like sports. And I'm 30 years old and I love sleeping in. But if it's been a little while since you've been in the habit of mass, I don't want you to forget those good things. But don't let them get in the way of your relationship with God. This is what we're celebrating today, is that God who's merciful, that God who's tender, that God who's gentle, that God who'd rather die on the cross than not be with you forever. This is your parish. This is your home.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Lord of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joy we come to our loving Father who hears and answers all our desires. Our response tonight, hear our prayer. For the entire body of Christ, for hearts and minds renewed by the mystery of Christmas, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the family of nations, for people of all races and beliefs, for living signs of God's generous creative love, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the safety of our troops throughout the world, and that they promote peace and justice, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Edmund Hubbard Langsdorf, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all of those named in our Book of Remembrance, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish community, and for those our beloved who are recently deceased, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those intentions known only in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, your grace inspires good works in Christians this holy season. May the answer to our prayers today bring goodness all the year long through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing in that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please remember that you must continue to wear your mask as you come to the table of the Lord to receive communion when you're in front of a Eucharistic minister or priest. Remove your mask and consume the host and then return your mask to your face. If you are receiving on the tongue, you must go to Deacon Jim or Father John.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.